Today we're gonna to look at four new products by the guys at Accusonics that should help improve your vocal processing. Let's take a look. Yo, what's up everybody, it's your boy Slim, AKA Mr. Different. Back with another video today, we're gonna to do another plug-in review. Thanks to the guys at Accusonics. Yes, this is a kind of a, a late review. I should have did this last week, but I've been super busy and I'm finally getting around to it. So I do apologize to you guys and the guys at Accusonics for this late review, but it's here. We're gonna dive into these plugins, check it out. So this is a, I guess a brand new plugin collection from Accusonics. It is the Era processing um, or remover plugins. Basically, there are four different processing uh, plugins where they do various things and they're all one knob, simple to use uh, plugins. And I know a lot of people don't like one knob plugins, but you know they're very useful because they're simple to use anybody can use them and it should help you out get you a that pretty much just kind of help uh clean up your vocals not really process them and make them sound better but just kind of clean them up if they have problem areas so before we get into if you can't check me out it's different tv on all social medias you know soundcloud twitter and what is it soundcloud twitter youtube facebook everything and subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification because youtube is acting stupid and it won't let you know when i go live on this let's just jump right to it and check it out so here we are inside of studio one and I have four examples for each plugin. So the plugins we're gonna look at today is the Era Deesser. So if we bring it up, is the Era Deesser? Hope I'm pronouncing it right. Era. Hope I'm <laughs> hoping it right. Uh, the noise remover. We have a plosive remover, and we also have a reverb remover. So like as you can see, all these plugins are one knot plugins, and they're designed to pretty much help clean up your audio not to make it no compression no eq no reverb to help clean it up to get it in a better start point a starting point for you to start processing it with your compression and all that good stuff that you normally would do so we'll take a look at each one individually i have like i said four different examples that i will show you guys and show you how they work so first i want to start with the de -esser. so this is what i have for the de -esser. um it's a very and oh, also all these examples are extremely overdone, meaning I'm going beyond and beyond to make it even sound worse to see what these plugins can actually do. But these are not any in, in, in any kind of real world scenario. So, you know, don't worry. Um, <laughs> I just overdid the, the S's and plosives and everything just to kind of overdo everything. So keep that in mind. So, yeah, here we go. So this is what I have for the uh, de to pl uh, play with. All right, here we are testing out the de-esser, and we're going to see how good that it does. Getting rid of some of these S's and T's and, you know, the hard sounds and get out the S's. And C's. As you can see, I have a lot of S's and T's, and, you know, I have a very sibilant voice. So if you have a very sibilant voice, then yes. Yeah. So as you can see in this process, you have one knob, which is the processing. You have your different modes, which is narrow, normal, and broadband. And then this intensity knob, which when you click that, it actually boosts up the intensity or doubles the processing to it. Now, I will say this. I was playing with this before I started, and for some reason, it's not processing my audio, just the de -esser. I don't know if it's something with Studio One or what it is but it's it says it's processing my uh my audio but it's not doing any changes so it might be because i have compression and eq going into the uh into my interface i don't know so hopefully you guys can tell me that i don't know but try it out for yourself links in the description below all right, here we are testing out the de -esser, and we're going to see how good that it does. Getting rid of some of these S's and T's and, you know, the hard sounds and get out the S's and see how good it is. If, if you can see when I mess with the output, it doesn't change the volume. So good it is. And I'm really speaking really prominent with these S sounds. All right, here we are testing. So I don't know if it's an issue with Studio One and this plug in particular. I might have to try it on FL Studio, but I've seen other people, it worked fine for them. So I think it's just me and Studio One. I don't know why, but it's only this plug in. So yeah, try it out for yourself. Download it, try it out and see for yourself. Unfortunately, we can't really see what it's doing to the sound. So that does suck. So let's move on to the next one. Then like I say I'll do a follow up video about it if anything changed. Next up is the noise remover. So with this um, right here, you have noise reduction. It's basically going to get out some of that background noise, the sizzle, the slow sounds in the background. When your preamp is turned to too loud, you got noise in the background, so like that. You have your processing right here once again. You have your um, output, so you can control the output of the signal. And you have different processing modes. You have uh, a high-pass focus mode, a low-pass frequency focus. You have a high and low focus. You have a mid-focus. So you have different focus modes to pretty much, you know, just whatever. Or you have all frequency, where it just kind of removes all frequency noise. So I'll play you what I sound like. Now, it's very loud. You can hear the background noise. And I'm talking really quiet because I said I did gain up my preamp. 
they got my microphone turned up really loud and you should hear some background noise like i talk a little quiet but yeah there should be a little background noise in the background and we're actually going to see if this can get rid of some of that background noise and the hissing and stuff so let's be quiet so as you see it's a very overly dramatic and you know overly overcooked uh source but as you see, when I turn it on, you start hearing the processing. You start hearing some of the artifact in the course, but you can see that it actually is doing something to the sound. So get rid of some of that background noise and the hissing and stuff. So let's be quiet. Okay, let's see. So here we are right now, and I'm actually got my microphone turned up really loud, and you should hear some background noise. Like I talk a little quiet, but yeah, there should be a little background noise in the background. And we're actually going to see if this can get rid of some of that background noise and the hissing and stuff. So let's be quiet. So right in here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of just make a loop in this little area right here. And I turn it off so you can hear the noise. So you hear all that noise right there. Now let's go ahead and turn the processor on and then we'll just crank it up a little bit and see if it's actually removing it. Now, of course, you are hearing some artifacting and some, you know, some degradation of sound because you can't really push stuff like this to it. This is like, they say, this is a worst case scenario type thing. Like, this is just over the top. So, I don't think in a real world situation it's going to be this bad. But the fact that it does remove some noise in the background now, that is a good indication. Also, like I said, you can, you know, bring the volume up and down with the output. So, like I said, like, this plugin works fine, just the DS just did not work for some reason in Studio One. So I don't know what is about that, but I digress. It's a DS, so just get rid of some of the S sounds. But yeah, the noise reduction is really good. So if you have like some bad, some little background noise or a little bit of hiss or whatever, you can remove that if it's not too much or too crazy. Because what's that? Once you push the processing to the limits or the extremes, you start getting some of that artifacting, which is not good at all. And you don't want artifacting inside of your sound. So yeah, so let's move to the next one, which is the plosive remover. So we'll go to that. Oh, I do want to point out that all these GUIs can be resized. <sighs> that is so good. Like you could resize all these. Man, every I love resizable GUIs. Like, thank you. Um, but yeah, so here's an example of the plosives that I'm doing. Like I say, it's very overdone. So now we're gonna check out the plosive remover, which is you know the B's and P's and P's and stuff like that and see how good it can remove some of these plosive sounds and I'm so basically when you do hard consonants or anything like P's B's and stuff like that them plosive sounds usually you would have a windscreen or a pop filter but like I say if you don't if you don't have it and you do get some of them still in there this should help kind of tame them down a little bit so we're going to turn it on and it's basically the same thing you have normal and extreme modes and you have the process like I say it's just a one knob type thing so if we start from the beginning so now we're going to check out the plosive remover which is you know the b's and p's and p's and stuff like that and see how good it can remove some of these plosive sounds that i'm popping inside of the micro and you can see it is bringing it down i say it's course it's going to mess with your audio quality the farther the harder you push it and this is an extreme example of that if i put it on extreme you can really hear how it just kind of which is you know the b's and p's and p's and stuff. now if i play that without the plug in or the b's and p's and p's and you can just hear it's actually doing its job you know, the B's and P's and P's and it does, re it reduces it and brings it down. So that's really good at facts doing like I said, but in a real world situation, you won't have to go that crazy with it. But the fact that it does remove some of them plosive sounds is amazing. Cause like I said, some of us don't have a good pop filter or have a pop filter at all. And if you do get some of them P's and B's into your uh, actual source of sound, this can help you remove that and get you more of a cleaner sound. So next to the last but not least, we can talk about the reverb remover. This is Fat Filter Reverb by the way, but I actually simulated some reverse. I simulate like a little small room sound. So this is like a little small room, nothing special there. And just to kind of give you an example of somebody with an echoey room. So this is what it sounds like. And last but not least is the reverb remover. And I'm going to put some reverb, like an artificial reverb on top of my plugin. Just, just as like a normal sounding room. If you got like a really echoey room, like an apartment or something like that. Here's the reverb remover. And as you can see, it's very simple. It's, it basically looks like the um the noise remover with the same thing of how you focus and how it removes everything. I put on all frequency. It has an auto button though, which means the more processing you do, it actually raises up the output depending on the processing. So it, I'm guessing it lowers down the reverse, so it's boosting the gain up as well at the same time. So it kind of evens itself out. So that's really good right there. So let's go ahead and play it with and without it. So we'll play it without it and then I'll kick, uh, kick it in so you can hear what it's doing.
Last but not least is the reverb remover. And I'm going to put some reverb, like an artificial reverb on top of my plugin, just a light one. And then we're going to see how good it can remove that reverb. Hopefully it's removing it. I don't know because I'm going to add artificial reverbs like I can hear right now. But yeah, echo, you know, reverb. And we'll just see how good it's going to be able to remove the reverb. All right. And last but not least is the reverb remover and i'm gonna put some reverb like an artificial reverb on top of my plugin just a light one and then we're gonna see how good it can remove that reverb hopefully it's removing it i don't know because i'm gonna add artificial reverbs i can hear right now but yeah echo and once again another plugin that does a job i said i this is artificial reverb so real room reverb won't be that bad unless you're just in a very big room or studio or something like that and it's going to be all over the place but the fact that it is actually able to remove some of that reverb sound is very nice like i said once again you don't want to push it too hard because you do start getting artifacting and that will start degrading your sound and giving it kind of a nasty grainy you know like frequencies are being cut away type of sound because it is removing frequencies in your sound source that it that it thinks is reverb because it's doing all this process behind it so you want to be very careful with uh, pushing it too hard if it's really really extreme just re-record or whatever but if it's not if it's just a little bit you're going to just edge it out a little bit could be great now my final thoughts about all these plugins the fact that they're very good plugins the fact that they're like it's on sale right now for about a hundred so bucks so you're pretty much paying like 20 bucks a plug in something like that and it sounds really good like they really work i did get one called d uh era d which is a uh a, a, it is an eq plugin but i didn't i got the version without all the plugins they have a one that has even more play had an extra plugin in it or you can just get the four um one knob plugins um i think they're very useful they could come in handy for certain situations if you have you know a noisy room a lot of noise in your microphone a lot of noise in your audio reverb issue with plosives and stuff like that uh so i can't really say about the ds because for some reason it just does not work inside of studio one which is a shame because I'm pretty sure it's a good DS and I've seen videos of people using it and it is a pretty dang good DSer by itself. But overall, there's some very good plugins, one knob plugins, uh, that work. Like I said, if you, if you're not really big on using expensive plugins, I have like, you know, you want a couple of good, like utility plugins. I would say, look at them, definitely try out the demo and get them while they're on sale. If you want to get them, try to demo out, try them for yourself, use them in your own situation. Like I said, cause all these examples are super extreme. So I doubt anybody's going to be this bad when it, their audio is going to be this bad. But the fact that they work even on these bad of ex extreme examples, I'm pretty sure normal examples are going to sound really good and work really well. So I would say just try them out, download them in and just, yeah, just try them out and see for yourself. And, and in the end, I can't really say I recommend them or don't because at the end of the day, if you don't have these kind of plugins, they could come in handy. And if you do, then you probably don't need these. So, yeah, just try them out. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can download a trial for these plugins and try them out for your dang self and see if it works for you. But, yeah, anyway, that's once again another review. I want to say shout out to the guys at AccuSonics for sending me a copy of this to try out for you guys and giving you my honest opinions and all that good stuff. And I hope you guys try it out. You know, check it out. If it's for you, get it. If it's not, skip it it's up to you for that example but yep there it is no problem so you know who it is your boy slim aka mr different not motivated by the money but the like comments, subscribe, and views hope you guys enjoy like always any questions leave them in the description below links in the description below to these products and where you can download them and i will catch you guys in the next video have a good one everybody